Howdy, Beef Labart here, and welcome. Alright, this is the dev kit for Conan Exiles. And if you have not gone into it before, or looked around, or been able to figure out anything, then, um, yeah. This will kind of get you going with uh, a little bit of the basics. Um, I've already got a mod in creation, but for an example, uh, one thing you want to do is creatures and I'll show you what I've got in mind so far then we'll go through the quick steps of creating a new mod but um, with the one that I've got currently uh, the only thing that I've done is I've created the RPC component and the mod controller and a tables folder and inside that is where you're gonna put your modified tables that you've, you create so without further ado when you open up your blueprint for the first time it is going to take quite a bit of time now I'm told that I did not need to do some of the stuff that I did in this but I'm used to Unreal Engine 4 being well slightly problematic at times so I would rather um, have a little bit of redundancy built in so what I've done here is first off whenever you create this you need to go to class defaults just to make sure that's selected and then you need to create by hitting the plus under the mod section and you need target actor class is going to be your base player character component to add is your RPC component and I even though right now nothing is in that RPC component but we've got it anyway just to be on the safe side addition rule server that's fine and component tag is, is blank um, Essentially, whenever you're creating your mod controller, you just right-click inside your mod folder, in the root of your mod folder, and then create a blueprint class. And then type in right here, mod controller, and then you select that here, mod controller. I've already created one, but and it's seeing that. So you just click on that and create it, and it will do so. If I do it now and then hit select, it's going to ask me to give it a name and, and so forth. I'm not going to do it. So um, I've added a preview image in just so I can have that image. I um, allowed it to do that in the, the actual mod information itself. Um, the RPC component, once you create it, um, yeah, there's nothing there. Uh, essentially all you're doing to create the RPC component is you right click blueprint class and then you're going to go to actor component and then give that the name RPC kittens it doesn't matter what it, whatever you call it just remember what you called it and then whenever you're actually in the um, the mod controller then that's where you're actually going to be making your reference to something that doesn't have any data in it. Doesn't make sense now, but it will later. Anyway, now it's going to take a few minutes to get rid of that. I, I should have created it all the way, but I said that's that's all you have to do is once you you do that, just create it. Now it's got to go through all the freaking files and make sure there's no references to it anywhere, even though I just created it and it will have to delete it from that anyway so as soon as it gets done we'll suffer through the the load times and I apologize for making you sit here and watch nothing on the screen but this is all part of what you end up doing So for right now I've got this mod set up to do what I want it to do and I'm gonna go ahead and create this new one Again, inside the, the BP mod controller, the BP underscore is just part of my naming convention. I like to make sure that I know that uh, uh, it's a blueprint and it's the mod controller. So, you just have to remember, target actor class is the base player. The component to add is RPC component, and that's all we're really going to change once we create this. There's nothing in the event graph. It's only in the mod table operations which is here 
So with that being said, let's go ahead and create a new mod. And if you're going to do multiple things in one mod, make sure you name it based on a you know a universal thing. Um, if you're just doing one small feature, like I did um, select active mod, I started doing a teleporter. And I'm still going to work on that, but I'm going to encompass that as part of my, my main mod system. But let's go ahead and create a new mod. And folder name. So we want to switch to a new mod after creating, which means it's going to have to reload the entire engine, which is going to suck, but whatever. Um, I'm just going to call this BBG underscore. You can't use spaces. BBG test mod. And then create. Now it's going to close the engine down automatically. It's going to reload the engine and bring you up into your new mod. I know my other mod is working correctly, so I'm not worried about it right now. So we sit here and wait, and wait, and wait. Um, currently, Conan Exiles Dev Kit is based off of Unreal Engine Editor version 4.15.3. Um, something to take into consideration is some of the features that are available in 4.20, which is the current version of Unreal Engine, um, the editor version, won't be available in this. Now, to a lot of people, 4.15 was the last true stable version of Unreal Editor. And that's why a lot of people who are developing things are still using 4.15. Um, I'm using 4.19 because my main projects that I was working on um, all use a specific Steam subsystem and I just have not updated to 4.20 and I have not updated to get the latest version of the plugin that's required to make that work. So yeah, that's why I'm still on 4.19, it's just a, out of laziness. I've actually been doing more with Conan Exiles, living in the game practically, destroying my life. Thanks, Tim. Um, yeah. All right. So now that we're back into it, we're actually into the actual editor. It's going to discover all the assets. And blah 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 blah. Yeah, an airplane going over. And mods, BBG test mod. There is nothing here. I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder called tables because I'm going to need that there. I'm going to go ahead and add in a blueprint class actor component RPC BBG that's just what I'm going to call it. Lovely. I'm not putting anything in it but next what I'm going to do is blueprint class and I'm going to do right here under search I'm going to type in mod and start typing it in and it comes out right there mod controller select and we're gonna call this um, BP underscore mod controller alright now I'm gonna hit save all and then I'm gonna go ahead and open this it's gonna take a while to open the very first time after that, every time you open it, it will just snap right up. But as you can see, it is a long, tedious process of waiting for this thing to load. And unfortunately, we just have to deal with it. But we want to go ahead and get this done first. And suffer through getting into this file so we can go ahead and set up the basis of what we're doing. Um, come on. Come on. It's like watching paint dry. I mean, seriously. This thing takes forever to, to, to load up the very first time. And it's a blueprint thing. I, it, it's not like this in any of the projects that I work on in Unreal Engine 4 and 4.19 or 4.18 or 4.17. You know, the versions that I've used, I've never had this problem of it sitting here and taking this long to open a blueprint. Even with blueprints that are really vastly huge. And some of these aren't. I mean, this one right here is empty. We haven't got anything in it whatsoever. And it's still taking this long 
to to load up for the very first time. I mean, we can put a whole bunch of stuff in there, close it, and then open it right back up, and bang, it'll pop right open. But for some reason, this is just you know why? Because Unreal Engine. Why? Because UE4. So we'll just sit here and waste time, drum our fingers on the table, stare at an empty coffee cup, and yeah. Any day now. So while while we're waiting on it, um, when you're creating your first mod, it's okay to be ambitious and like, oh, I want to do this. Well, take small steps. You really need to learn how to crawl before you can walk, and then walk before you can jog, and then jog before you can run, because well, we all know what it's like for you know getting in here and like great ambitions and saying. I want this to work and then you don't know what you're doing and it happens all the time a lot of um, new mod developers or game developers they get into Unreal Engine 4 or they get into this mod toolkit which is a 150 gigabyte download um, after suffering through that download uh, you finally get into it and then you realize you have no clue what the hell you're looking at and you get discouraged and you just close the thing and, you, and never go back into it ever again well that's that's fine if you want to give up go right ahead this isn't for everybody but if you've got the the intestinal fortitude um, you've, if you've got the, the courage to stick it out you can do a lot of really cool things and, and that's the thing is getting over well first off get over yourself I know it sounds terrible but you got to get over yourself first <sighs> oh we're making progress no it's not locked up it just takes this long alright so now that we've got it open I'm gonna drag it up here so it locks it to the, um, the, the the bar and now we need to go over to mods additional class components hit the plus key target actor class um, player we want the base player character component to add I made mine simple I put BBG in it but RPC the one that we created and that's pretty much it compile and save that's just to get started and then we'll save it because a mod table has nothing in it the options of what you have to work with if you just right click over here you have clear data table merge data table remove data table rows and make array now in the other example of what I was doing was um I actually did some redundancy and the one that I was working on was the the map table so what I ended up doing was I did remove data table rows okay and I linked it together here and then from row IDs, well, first off, target data table. And I did it out of two, but we'll just do one as an example, and then I'll delete it. But we want it to be from the, uh, the item. So we want it to be item table right here. And then what we want to do is drag off from here, and we're going to get rid of by saying make array and we want the row ID for the row that we wanted to get rid of which is 90,000 which was the map room and that's just because that's what I was working on before and I have to create a new table now so I'm gonna go ahead and, and delete this we'll remake that here in just a minute um, what you you're gonna have to figure out what what it is you're gonna do in my example what I did was I created um, a modified recipe for something and if you're just doing a modified recipe you have to take into account two different things when you look at the item itself um, we go to the item table right here and this is a data table and as you look you're gonna have the item number and it starts at 10,001 not sure why but okay cool that's fine um, the name stone roughly hewn chunk of stone gives your basic description and so forth but let's look at it down here this information here is all down here 
name, roughly hewn chunk of stone, blah, 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 blah. We know that it's a game item. Building class is none, just a lootable pickup item. Um, the visual object, rock one, is a generic. It's what you use for pretty much everything. Action blueprint use. Okay, nice naming convention there, but none on that. Maximum stack size is 100. Well, what if you want to make it to where you want to carry a thousand of the stone? Well, this is where you're going to end up having to go to, if you're rebuilding a stack size, you have to go through every single solitary item because you have to edit the row and not the, the column itself. So you would come in here, and if you want to change the stack size, then you can... I wouldn't change this one right here. Don't mess with the original item tables. So that would be where you'd go for that. The equip location, not sure on those just yet. But the GUI category is what it's going to be. It's a material. If you look at your drop down, it could be weapon, armor, consumable, material, building item, category count, whatever. You got those to work with. Um, visual static mesh. I'm not seeing a whole lot of use of these. Um, container size, item flags, can be looted is a common one. Uh, weapon types and so forth. But the, the first example of what I want to do here is I want to create a, a super weapon, a super sword. Um, and we'll do that and we'll test that. So another thing I want to look at is if you're replacing an existing item like I did with the the map room I changed the recipe on what it takes to actually make it well you're gonna also have to modify your item table because if you only need wood and stone to make something then you're gonna need those two items to repair it and repair item 19158 well that's gonna be a different material you need one of those and uh, let's see. Well, that's not a good example here. But let's actually look at the map room. Now, the repair item, you're going to need item number 11,500. You're going to need 150 of those. And weight one, I don't know what that's actually referring to right yet. But item two is going to be 16,002. And then the amount is 27 so these are the items you're going to need to re use for re repairing the item and if you used wood and stone as your building materials you're going to need to have that in there as well so well that's your your map table now, if you want to look at your recipes table you're going to have to scroll down to recipes and then you got a recipes table there same thing here split wood um, if you come down here you want to split wood and make branches. Okay, cool. Um, you have the ingredients. Ingredient one, where you're you're just doing the, the wood, which is 1,011, and you're splitting one, and you're creating 100,012 or 10,012, which is the split wood. You're creating this item by your result ID, and you're getting two of them. So if you want whatever you split that wood and you want 200, you would change your result one quantity. And that's where you would do that. So let's actually go back over here and let's create our super weapon. Okay. Um, let's look at our weapons list. And... Let's see, let's go with a one-handed sword. Now, as we look at the one-handed sword in that particular box, there's a bunch to choose from. We want the basic. We got a Death Knight sword. Hmm, sounds cool. So before we actually get crazy in here, um, we need to figure out which weapon we're going to use. One hand sword, you know, these, the kind of aqua blue color, that is a static mesh. 
Now, the pinkish color right here, that is a destructible mesh. This will come in handy later when you're doing modeling and stuff. Um, well, we can use a arm as a sword. <sighs> well, I hate to do this, but I'm going to health issues. I'm going to have to pause the the, um, the stream for a few minutes, and then I'll come back here shortly, and we'll pick up where we left off. Um, it'll probably end up breaking it in two parts, but um, in the second part of this video, we, we got you started with the basics of it, and second video, we'll pick up on actually creating a new custom weapon, and we'll go from there, and I will be back shortly. <laughs> 